webinar is especially intended for the Daria community, but others who are interested are also welcome. As Arius mentioned, you can ask questions by the chat. Okay. Who is someone is making? Oh. You can ask questions by the chat. We will try to answer them during the session. Someone is interrupting. Can someone close his mic? First, I would like to introduce both speakers, Peter Kirali and myself. Peter Kirali is a software developer and researcher. As a member of Göttingen eResearch Alliance, he is maintaining the Göttingen Instance of Dataverse, which is open for members of the Göttingen Campus, the Academic Institution of Lower West Saxony, and the Network of Max Planck Institutes. He is contributing several open source software including data first. His research topic is measurement of metadata quality. My name is Marion Wittenberg. I'm working for DANS, data archiving and network services in the Netherlands. My background is in sociology and social science informatics. Currently, I'm a service manager of data personnel, a repository service DANS is maintaining for Dutch universities and research institutes. And I'm task leader of task 5.2 of the SHOCK project, in which we work on a data repository service for SHOCK. I have a question because someone is, is typing and I I hear it very loudly, so I'm not sure whether this is Iris or uh, Irina. No, this is not me. Please, everyone, if you can, uh, yes, mute yourself unless you want to speak, just for to prevent any background noise for the speakers. Yes. Thank you. After our introduction, I would like to know something about your background. And therefore, we made a few Mentimeter questions. Please go to www.menti.com and use code 3740954. So please, if you could answer these uh, questions. So what is your country of residence? At the moment there are only people from Slovenia, but I, th I probably there are more, but we have to wait a little bit uh, until everyone has used the... Could you please repeat the code? The code is 3740954. You can also see the code and the, um, the URL on the slides now. So most people are from France, Austria, Slovenia. Switzerland. Belgium. Austria. So we have a very diverse audience from yeah from from Slovenia to to Belgium to Hungary to Switzerland Germany so there are a lot of people Norway I think uh, the northern part the southern part and in between whole of Europe is uh, represented uh, the next question please Which of the shock stakeholders categories do you identify with? Are you a researcher? Are you uh, someone uh, who's dealing with policies? Um, are you a data manager? So there are a lot of people from libraries and archives and a few people from researchers and universities and academic institutions, I, I think, that, that are also researchers. Can we go to the next slide of the next question, please? 
please indicate your research domain or area of expertise. So this is a this is open text. So this 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 will become a doodle. So please type in what you would like to. Sustainability, social sciences, research data support. Open science data, a lot of uh, a very diverse background of, of uh, people. Linguistics, philosophy. Please add the next question. Have you heard about the shock project before? So most people have heard of, about the project, seven not. And next question, or is it the last one? This is the last one. Um, so now I have to share my, share my screen again. So I'm again, and I start my presentation. So this content of the presentation, I will introduce the shock uh, project and what we are developing in this project, data first for shock. And then my colleague Peter will take over with an introduction on research data management and a demo session about data first. We will complete this session with a discussion guided by a Mentimeter questionnaire. Shock, Social Sciences and Humanities Open Cloud is an Horizon 2020 funded project with the aim of developing the social science and humanities area of the EOSC, the European Open Science Cloud. There are 45 partners working together, maximizing reuse through open science and fair principles, interconnecting existing and new infrastructures, and establishing appropriate governance models for the shock EOSC are the main objectives. Within task 5.2, we are developing a data repository for social science and humanities researches. Therefore, we make use of the Dataverse software. Dataverse is a repository software originally developed by the Institute of Quantitative Social Sciences of Harvard University in Boston. U, uh, USA. For shock, we will adapt the software to the needs of the European research infrastructures. Four European research infrastructures are represented in this task. CESDA for the social sciences, DARIA for the arts and humanities, CLARIN for the language and technology area, IRIS for the heritage science. From every ERIC, one institute is represented. Dans and Ausda for CESDA, PSNC and Göttingen from Daria, University of Tromso for Claren, and CNR from Italy for Eris. What is Dataverse? Dataverse is a repository software for sharing and publishing data sets. It's open source software developed by IQSS of Harvard and a lot of organizations around the world contribute to the development of the software. They collaborate in the Global Dataverse Community Consortium. 55 instances are providing support to researchers all around the world. So, and these slides will be shared afterwards, and these links, you can go to the different uh, uh, Dataverse instances available around uh, the world. And so we would like to adapt um, the software to the needs of the European um, research infrastructure. So what we, what we do is we produce a mature software development pipeline. So we make the software uh, um, 
we, we make it a pipeline in which uh, the software will be tested automatically. The other thing what we develop are previewers. Sometimes uh, if you see uh, a data set in a repository, you just would like to have a glimpse. You, you don't want to, to download the data uh, at once, so we develop previewers. What we also do is developing uh, migration solutions. So some institutes or some researchers are now using uh, um, data repositories that are uh, outdated and they would like to migrate the data to the new data first. And what is very important for the European use case is the translation of the user interface in the European languages. And we also look at uh, PID providers so we can uh, make use of the, the, the various PIDs that are needed by the different institutes. And there are a couple of other uh, technical solutions we are developing uh, at the moment. I think now um, my colleague um, Peter will go in more detail about uh, research data management. Yeah. Uh, hello, welcome everybody. So just a few words about research data management in general, and I will uh, show you some examples within the Dataverse. So research data management is, is about uh, organization, storage, preservation, and, and sharing uh, research data, which are collected and used during the lifetime of uh, a research project. Uh, I guess some of you know the some of the the models. So there are there are multiple models of what is the life cycle or lifetime of a research project from the planning and uh, grant application, uh, actually doing the research, then this uh, collecting the data, uh, writing the papers, and uh, uh, publishing both the papers and the the research data. So the, the research data management has some aspects in all of these uh, activities. Uh, why it is important? There are two main uh, factors which uh, I mentioned now. One is the reproducibility. So uh, there is a crisis in some subdomains and uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, in, in these years it became uh, uh, a research topic on its own that uh, in subdomains, some subdomains, it is not easy to reproduce uh, the researchers, re re the researchers, uh, partly due because uh, there's no research data behind. So they don't publish their models, they don't publish their, their uh, data, just the results. And since the results are so uh, uh, different, it is it is uh, very hard to verify which are the proper results. If we, we uh, provide our research data, then uh, others can, can verify it. And uh, there's another reason is that in some cases, uh, uh, plagiarism, plagiarism uh, happens. And uh, like in Germany and in Hungary, and I guess it's in 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 um, many other countries, there were uh, famous uh, 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 scandals, uh, mainly bound to politicians, but not uh, only just politicians, which um, uh, due to um, um, stalling data or stalling the the research from others. So if we, we publish our research data, then um, we somehow prevent uh, this, these activities. And there is another uh, reason uh, why research data management and, and sharing of the research uh, data is important, is improving the reusability of the, the uh, data. So uh, it, is, it is a two different step to collect the data and building a model uh, on top of this data. In, uh, there, is a, there are some cases where um, uh, the data collection uh, is, is uh, 
very expensive uh, activities. Think about uh, large equipments when you have to have a, a million uh, euro machine to collect the data, for example, in astrophysics or in some uh, uh, cases of biology and physics, chemistry, and etc. Cetera, et cetera. Uh, others have only the, the brain, but don't have the money to 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 repeat the same experiments. But uh, they are smart people enough to build their own models on top of others' data. And uh, in many cases, in in many founders recently, due to these two uh, uh, reasons not just suggest but um, uh, make it mandatory to to uh, at least archive your research data and uh, in many cases also sharing the research data. it's it's not the same uh, thing um because um archiving is is only only for you so or at the first place uh, it is not mandatory in every case, is to share the, those data. Can you go to the second uh, slide? Yeah. So, uh, what kind of activities belongs to to research data management? Uh, first, it, it, it is not not an order, but but uh, in this list, the first thing is is uh, uh, data policy and planning. So, before you start uh, research. Uh, you have to think about how your research data will be collected, who will have an access to it, uh, what should be happen if uh, some um, uh, querels um, happens on the top of the data. For example, you have a, a research group and uh, some people will leave the research group and go to a different uh, university. Can they still use the data they uh, contribute, and so forth? So there are many things you can you can uh, um, uh, make a policy about uh, when you start uh, your research. And the second thing is is right. So who owns the data? Who can access the data? What is the terms of use? Uh, are there uh, limitations, either time or, or uh, regions or uh, per persons? Another big aspect is metadata. I will I will talk about uh, metadata in regarding to uh, dataverse in a few minutes. Then formats, which formats uh, you have to use, uh, what formats supports long-term archiving and, and long-term usability. For example, if you you uh, use a binary format which is not documented and and bound to a given um, uh, manufacturers, which in some years they don't support uh, this format anymore, then your data will be virtually useless. Another big topic is that that how to use your data in a data analysis tool, for example, in in, in R or uh, Python scripts, or with the Jupyter notebooks or other uh, uh, specific uh, uh, data analysis or or data visualization tools. A very important thing is the persistent identifier. So when you you uh, put your data in a given location. Uh, it is not guaranteed that that uh, this location won't change anymore. So uh, the IP address could be changed, or the the whole repository will be moved to a different place, or the repository software will be changed to another one which has a different uh, uh, URL structure. Persistent identifier separates the the actual URL and gives. Uh, an identifier for the uh, uh, data and uh, share this identifier in a central database. Uh, there are several uh, persistent identifier technologies. Right now, the two most popular are uh, Handle and DOI. By the way, both are supported by, by uh, 
uh, data words, and both are stored in a central uh, uh, database, and both database supports discovery. So it's not just the, the URL, that's the most important thing, uh, but you can share the metadata. And um, in case of uh, DOI, the, the uh, uh, Microsoft Academic or Google Scholar or ORCID um, monitoring this, this uh, DOI uh, databases and updates their own uh, uh, discovery interface. So your data will not will be not only available available through a particular repository, but in a range of repositories. Another um, and I, I forgot to mention that that the the maintainer of the repository will always update the persistent identifier database if there is a change uh, locally. Another aspect is long-term archiving. Uh, uh, Dataverse could uh, uh, work together with long-term archiving tool. However, is not a long-term archiving uh, tool itself. Uh, it means that that for decades or or even more time, uh, your data will be uh, archived and and will be available somehow. Um, it's it's a relatively new new thing, so we don't know what is exactly means long term archiving. So, with is 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 it uh, decades or hundreds? We don't have uh, yet uh, enough uh, experiments. However, there are some some nice use cases. For example, the, the CERN uh, has a distinct policy that they never ever delete uh, any important uh, data. So you can find still uh, data from the 50s, which is uh, quite a long time um, uh, within this context. And last things, what happens if you have uh, extraordinary data like uh, big data or small data or or data format which is very particular to your to your research you have to think about uh, this and and research data management tools provide some uh, uh, solutions for for these uh, problems Okay, so in, in, in a nutshell, this was uh, about uh, research data management. And right now I will show you how it works uh, in Dataverse. And, and I tell you uh, the general Dataverse uh, properties. Yeah, in this this um, demo, I will show you two different uh, dataverses. The first one is is uh, the Harvard dataverse. The other one is the Göttingen dataverse, which I'm the ma maintainer of. So, when you check a uh, dataverse, you will find uh, uh, that. Usually on the on the uh, top of the the the, the first uh, first page, the landing page contains some some general information uh, about the repository. So here you can find that that uh, this Harvard Dataverse uh, contains uh, this number of data sets. Uh, this number of downloads and and this number of so-called data verses. So there's a. Uh, it's not personally. I think that it's not a very uh, uh, good thing that that data verse means uh, uh, two different things. One is the name of the software, and the other is a name of a collection. So data verse with small d is a, a collection which might contain uh, additional collections. For example, you can use it uh, as a uh, higher, uh, to build a hierarchical uh, structure of your data. 
uh, you have uh, uh, probably a research group. The research group have individual researchers. The individual researchers have individual research topics, and uh, they collect uh, data for each individual research topic. So these are uh, building a structure. And data sets are the, the uh, bottom of uh, this hierarchy. The data set contains uh, the data itself, which is the most important thing, and uh, metadata, which describes what it is about and how it is uh, structured, etc., etc. And you can also add additional files like uh, documentation, which uh, describes the the fine uh, details of uh, the the data or you can add uh, softwares software codes which which uh, either helps the users to analyze the data or repeat the data collection that's go to one of these these uh, categories in in this uh, harvard dataverse you can find the top level categories uh, top level uh, scientific subjects i have to wait a bit and what you see here is a search interface With, with facets so you can uh, you don't have to to uh, type in a, a search term if you want to search or browse the the content uh, these categories are are uh, specific fields which are uh, exploded for you to 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 browse uh, browse it and use it as a filter if you create a uh, dataverse, so uh, a data collection, you can specify for yourself which uh, fields you would like to be exposed uh, to yourself and your your uh, data users. So these are the general ones. Uh, there are dataverse categories like uh, research project, researchers, organization and institutions, journal, research group, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, there are publication, year, subject, author name, affiliation, and so forth. And on the other side, on the right side, you can see the individual uh, uh, subsets, the individual collections. Uh, there are three kinds of uh, uh, information you can find in this uh, yeah, the ring is is in my room, unfortunately. Uh, one minute. Sorry. So I'm back. Um, so you can you can you can have uh, data verses, data sets, and files. So right now. Uh, the subject is arts and humanities, so this is this is filtered uh, uh, to that. We don't see the agricultural data, and low data, and etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And also, the files are uh, filtered out, so we don't see the files here. Only the data verses, so the large large uh, collections and data sets, the so small collections. You can type in any uh, uh, query here. What I would like to show you is uh, the advanced search, where you can find uh, uh, different uh, input uh, box for, for both data verses, the data sets, and for files. So you can, you can uh, looking for uh, any types of uh, information. It is also uh, adjustable by the the administrator of the dataverse. So this is the the 
the basic uh, if there is some some uh, uh, custom requirement additional fields could be uh, uh, make available for searching right now i use uh, the term history as a keyword to find uh, data sets which belongs to this uh, domain there's no guarantee that that uh, uh, the users will um, uh, fill out the metadata correctly in, in every dataverse i forgot to mention that 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 uh, there are two main operational mode in in dataverse one is uh curational and the other is somehow self-service so the uh the creational mode in the creational mode the the users interact with a librarian or or a data creator or data management there, there are lots of names for this this role who knows the the deep structure of the metadata uh, has has a specific knowledge about what are the important fields, what are the less important fields, what uh, helps the users to discover uh, the data, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And the when the the researcher interacts with the uh, this this guy, then uh, all together or uh, the the uh, data manager will upload the data, fulfill the form, et cetera, et cetera, and provides that the, the, uh, both the data and the metadata are in a proper format, uh, which supports long-term archiving, discovery, and all the features I, I mentioned uh, uh, in the research data management uh, uh, section. And the other is a self-service, where the user uh, has a right to upload uh, their data and, and uh, uh, upload their metadata. And uh, uh, in this case, there are no uh, quality assurance, uh, uh, built-in quality assurance, and uh, the users only fulfill, can only fulfill the, the mandatory fields. However, what is mandatory and not mandatory is it's also uh, uh, configurable. So I will show you uh, three examples. Because uh, humanities, I, I also have a humanities background. Um, it is it is not e not so easy to to decide what is uh, research data. So what what is my own research data? Because um, I'm I'm a historian, and as I as a historian, I I, uh, uh, I extensively used uh, data of of cultural heritage institutions, uh, library catalogs, uh, archive catalogs, and so forth. And of course, these are not my data. Usually, my data is what I I uh, uh, derived from these uh, uh, institutions, which are not uh, just their data, but so I, I can add some additional information, or, or I, uh, I use their data, which is not, which they don't have a, a full data set of, of its own, only just the metadata or a top level metadata. For example, here is a, a, a Letter uh, uh, from from Mexico from the uh, Mexican uh, Independence War, and uh, this researcher uh, put only the text of of uh, one letter. That's also metadata. Uh, let's let's see what what's uh, inside in this uh, data set. So we have a, a title, nothing special. But the next thing is what we can see here is a version. So it's version 1.0. Uh, 
it's very important that that uh, in dataverse everything is version so if you can you can uh, have a chance to create a new version in the new version you can you can modify uh, your uh, metadata or upload new data or you can change your existing data but this will be separate in uh, this this uh, versions will be separated and all the the versions are accessible so you can you cannot really overwrite uh, your own data uh, it will be separated and and always kept uh, separated uh, diversioning uh, helps you to go back and forth uh, your changes i will i will show you later in a, uh, uh, an example the next thing which is uh, important is a data citation uh, form so here you can see that uh, um, that's uh, uh, one of the uh, possible uh, data citation uh, format. The important thing here is that the data citation contains a URL which starts with doi.org. However, the, the URL of this site starts with dataverse.tdl.org. So uh, what we see here is is the person set identifier I mentioned earlier. So this this uh, citation not point to the actual URL where the the uh, uh, data set is available right now, and uh, maybe it will be changed over the time. But the persistent URL which will never change, hopefully. And also this this last piece of thing in the the citation is v1, which means that this is the first version. You can download this citation in in uh, different formats, uh, like EndNote, XML, RIS, or or BibTeX. Then you can find the most important uh, metadata, so like here the description subject uh, keywords and notes some of these are the the mandatory uh, fields so you should have a, a description and the subject and the subject should be uh, came from a, a dictionary a, a, a term list then the most important uh, part is the actual uh, uh, data. So there is a, a file uh, section here. In this uh, data set, there are only one uh, file, which is a, a text file. You can see that, that here uh, there are some technical uh, metadata, like the format. This is a plain text, the size, the date when it was uh, uploaded, uh, how many uh, times it was uh, downloaded, and MD5 hash, which um, which helps the repository and the the uh, users uh, to be sure that this is the 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 file the user uploaded. I I, I don't go to technical details. Later you can you can ask if you would like to ask. There is a metadata section which which contains all the metadata, so not just the most important ones, but but all the users uh, uh, added. You can see here that the language, um, contributor, who deposited uh, the files, when it was deposited, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It's important that that um, uh, each uh, data set has some kind of uh, terms of use. In Dataverse, there's a, a default terms of use, which is uh, CC0. CC stands for uh, Creative Commons. This is 
one of the most popular licensing schemes. They provide different uh, alternatives for, for, for different use cases. CC0 is the, the most basic one. It lets every user everything. So they can even sell the data if they want. They don't have to, to name you as a data creator, etc. etc. Uh, this is the default, but you can change it. You, you could add uh, uh, any other uh, CC0 license or any other uh, uh, similar schemes. There are uh, many. And also you can create your own uh, terms of use. And the last uh, thing is the versions tab. Uh, you can see here that that uh, that there is only one version uh, of uh, this data set. So this particular data set is not not a very large one. It's it contains a single file, a quite simple file. Let's check another one, which is. Uh, Or advanced. By the way, the Dataverse uh, uh, is not just a single repository, it's also an aggregator. So uh, in a single Dataverse, uh, the, the owner of the or the maintainer of the, the service can decide that they aggregate from other uh, Dataverses. So um, the previous one uh, came from the Texas uh, Digital Library, but it was aggregated by Harvard, so we can we can find it uh, via the the Harvard interface. So this one is is um, uh, from Political Science. You can see here that there's a, a, a longer description. Also, the title is Replication Data for Something, which means that this data supports a particular uh, uh, publication. This time it was a, a, a PhD dissertation, if I remember correctly. You can find here the, 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 the publication identifier within the, the ProQuest uh, database. And you can see here that that here it has a, a special uh, uh, terms of use uh, standard deposit terms 1.0. I don't go uh, into details what it what it, it what it means, but uh, this is one example for the custom uh, uh, rights management or terms of use management. Here we can see uh, different types of uh, data, so two PDFs and two tabular tabular uh, data. And what I would like to show you is um, an add-on feature of the Dataverse. It is not available for every Dataverse, but uh, most of them. So this one is a, a PDF viewer built in into, into Dataverse. So you don't have to download uh, particular files. You can see the content within uh, Dataverse. So this one is a, a PDF. We can check the pages. And let's see another one. This one is a, a tab delimited uh, format. is similar to like a CSV or or Excel file, but it's not a binary file. And you can see here that that uh, uh, the 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 viewer can show you the individual uh, content of the cells by rows and and columns. And also, there's a, a additional uh, feature for tabular uh, data, the Data Explorer. This is a different uh, add-on. Uh, this provides a statistic, statistical analysis of, of uh, 
uh, this kind of files. So you can see here that uh, these are the the list of columns within the the uh, uh, file, and you can see some um, additional information like uh, missing cases. So the number of rows, this value is not available. The minimum value, maximum value, uh, valid cases. And if there are some additional uh, information like label or categories, it is also uh, could be shown here. And let's check last example. This one is a, oh, uh, sorry, I forgot, I forgot to show you something. The versions, because this particular uh, data set has three different versions. You can see here that there is a short summary what happens between the, 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 the versions. So we can see that the 1.0 doesn't have any uh, fancy uh, description because this was the, the first published version. We cannot uh, compare uh, to anything. But uh, for the second and third versions, you can see here that this is a so short summary what changed. So for example, in the third version, uh, one related publication has been changed, the title has been changed, uh, additional citation metadata has been changed, uh, and we can we can see the details. So there's a, a comparison here that that this was the original or the, the previous title in the second version, and right now we have this uh, changed title. And let's check the third example. This is a little bit counter example. Uh, but it, it, it is it is uh, good to highlight what is what could be missing from uh, 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 research data? So this is also a replication data. This this uh, is a a special type of dataverse, small d, small d. So it's a data collection, which belongs to a particular journal. This journal is a journal of cultural analytics. I very like this this uh, journal. For, for uh, uh, digital so they 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 collect uh, data for themselves. They don't um, ask the users to put it somewhere, but they provide a, a, a repository where the uh, researchers can upload their their data, accompanied uh, by the paper. However, the problem with, with this particular uh, uh, data set is that it tells that, that uh, this data uh, supports an essay, but they forget to mention where can I find this particular uh, paper. And another thing, uh, which is which is uh, on the other way, on, on the other hand, uh, uh, a good example that they don't just uh, put the the data, but they also uh, uploaded the uh, scripts that zip, which contains how to analyze the data. So it it. Um, um, it enhances the reusability and repeatability of the, the uh, scientific research. So shortly, that's that's uh, the 
user interface of the dataverse. Of course, there are uh, other things, uh, but I would like to show you very shortly how to edit uh, data. And, and um, how to edit data and how to uh, uh, provide rights and how to manage rights. So this is my, my own uh, research data. It will be very short. So you can you can anytime go back to to edit either the the uh, metadata or the files. And here you can see here that that uh, there are number of uh, uh, fields within this block. It's called citation metadata, and <clears throat> Dataverse comes with. so-called metadata blocks, which are uh, fields bound together, which describe the particular domain. The citation metadata is the, the basic uh, and def the default uh, metadata block within, within Dataverse. There are um, five or six uh, additional metadata block, which are uh, domain specific. And also, it is possible to, to add your own uh, custom metadata. And within this uh, shock, we, one of our tasks, uh, Maria mentioned, is uh, to make the custom metadata blocks creation um, more easily. Right now, it, it, uh, it needs a collaboration between the maintainer of the, the uh, site and the researcher. So if we see the, the, the uh, set of available fields, you can see title, subtitle, alternative title. There are more than 33 fields uh, here. And some of these fields uh, could contain external links. For, so for example, the author can uh, check can can add an identifier uh, for your uh, personal account within a particular uh, uh, environment, for example, in Orchid, or uh, uh, he or she can add a researcher ID or Scopus ID, which stands for uh, identifiers in in Web of Science or or Scopus. Also. Uh, He can he can add uh, uh, when when I, I I showed you previously that we searched for uh, history, so this this term history could come from uh, a particular vocabulary, for example, uh, a library library uh, subject headings, or or a, a vocabulary in the in the uh, linked open cloud. And you can you can set uh, which vocabulary is it and what is the the URL. And if you put a URL in a particular format, then uh, the the uh, Dataverse interface help you to select a particular uh, keyword which is valid within this vocabulary. So you can the, the, shortly you can see here that. There are many fields are here, much more what we can see in the in the user interface. But because for the user, for the for the users, only those fields are displayed which are fulfilled. But you can you can add uh, more fields. In them. Another thing is. In the in the uh, I mentioned in the in the uh, uh, versions that that you can have multiple versions, but what happens between versions and how these versions are created? So once you you change uh, something or you can uh, create uh, a new data sets from scratch, the first uh, uh, phase of uh, your research data is a draft which is unpublished. The 
This means that, that it is not available for others. Uh, nobody else can, can search it. And uh, the, the uh, DOI, which is mentioned here, is not a real D DOI. It is just a reserved DOI. So if you click uh, here, the DOI will not be not resolved. So in order to, to uh, get your data published, there's a publication uh, button, a publish. And uh, this will do lots of things. The most important thing is that, that uh, it will finalize your, your edits and creates a new version. If it's the, the first version, this version name will be 1.0. If it's an additional one, you can select whether it is this version is a major version, major change, or a, a minor one. And uh, based on this, this could be 1.1 or 2.1. The most important thing is that this DUI will be uh, in production. So the metadata of this, this uh, data set will go to this central uh, DOI uh, uh, database. Most dataverse use uh, data site uh, database for that. And uh, one of the fair principles is that, that uh, the data will be accessible once you create a, a persistent identifier for that, which means that at least the metadata will be always, uh, I, I just did some, uh, some more minutes, but not, not, not so much. I will finish soon. So uh, uh, when you, when you upload it, uh, yeah, you, you cannot cannot uh, really delete uh, the data set. What you can do is so-called de-access uh, the data set so others won't uh, access the files itself, but the metadata will be always uh, available. So because, because this mechanism uh, uh, happens behind uh, the publish uh, publication, uh, please uh, be careful with it. Only publish uh, things you are uh, sure that it is ready to publish and you won't change your mind in the latest step. But if you want to uh, share uh, this information uh, with others, here you can find a private URL and uh, this generates a URL which uh, uh, makes available to to access uh, your uh, data. And the last things I would like to show you is just very shortly the rights management. Yeah, so within the software, there are uh, uh, different activities uh, a user can, can uh, uh, do like add dataverse, add dataset, et cetera, et cetera. And all these activities are grouped into roles. All the set of, of activities uh, a user can do. And you can assign uh, these roles to either individual uh, users. I have a colleague called Timo. I, gave Timo curator role, so he can do these activities. And within a, a research group, if you are not a, a sole a, a researcher, but you work in a, a large or smaller user group, uh, you can set a very complex uh, scheme who can access uh, and who can do what according to your, your data policy and, and uh, uh, data management plans. So thank you very much. That, that was the demo. And right now we can, we can go back to the uh, answer and questions uh, section.
Yes, hello. Um, there were there were a couple of questions uh, asked, so maybe we can go around very quickly. I try to share my screen. Yeah. Uh, one of the questions was uh, for how long can be the data deposit in data first? And the answer is that it, that's depending on on the policy of the institute. So data first. Uh, so there were there are already 55 um, instances running worldwide, and uh, depending on the institute and the policy, uh, they they will um, keep the data for 10 years or even less. I don't something uh, yeah, so that or more. So at 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 dumps, uh, we will keep uh, the data forever. Forever, but it's it's uh, we still have data from uh, the sixties uh, from the last century. So it has nothing to do with the with the technically uh, software, but it has to do with the policy of the institute. Um, there was a question of uh, the dataverse seems to to be quite slow. That maybe it has to do that uh, Peter is now using uh, Harvard. Uh, data first during his presentation. It's possible that Harvard is doing something at the moment that makes it slow, but normally it isn't uh, uh, slow. Yeah, uh, uh, w w w w one note is that that uh, well, this this webinar doesn't reflect the actual speed because um, we have to share screen. We are on VPN and etc. etc. Which which makes slower the communication you have to 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 find it uh, out for your own uh, environment and check whether it is slow for you or not yeah the next question was what 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 is uh, from mount airman what is the difference between dataverse and uh zenodo there is a an um an overview of the, of different uh, data repository software where you and uh, it's in the chat and we uh, will share it after this uh, meeting also the chat but uh, i think one of the the the, the things we prefer from uh, data versus what what um, peter uh, showed is that you can have a private url so before publishing data you can already shared with your journal or with your colleagues before publishing to the whole uh, world. And also uh, Dataverse has a very elaborate uh, uh, possibility to, sh to share data with uh, your peers or with uh, other people and, and the roles and uh, permissions attached to, to those roles that is very uh, um, that is that's an advantage of uh, data for us. Um, then there was a question of um, uh, connection to controlled vocabularies, and that is one of the main things we are developing within the shock project. So we would like to know, and later on we have the the Mentimeter questions, but we would like to know which vocabularies are important for you, so we can make connections to those vocabularies. So for instance, for the SESTA community, we uh, we make uh, Dataverse compliant with the CMM model, the SESTA metadata uh, model, and we also connect it to the, the SESTA mandatory controlled vocabularies. So if there is uh, something similar for Daria, we can make this also possible uh, for Daria. And also for, for Claren at the moment, we are looking in the uh, SIMD uh, metadata behind, uh, that's important for the Claren um, community. So we make Dataverse compliant with the SIMD uh, metadata. And then there was, there's also uh, a question about, can Dataverse allocate DOIs? Yes, it's, it's it's depending on the policy of the institute if if they would like to mint DOIs to 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 make a connection to data site or if they would like to have a DOI. It's also possible to 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 have a URN and BN. That's depending on the policy pos, uh, the policy of the institute. But um, for 
for the, the software is, is it's possible to 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 have a connection to different uh, persistent identifiers. Then I go back to the the questions. Um, oh yeah, there was also uh, a question of uh, Elizabeth about um, of there is of there is information about the business models. At the moment, we are working on this business this business models. So, what do you need as an institute to to have a service running, and how much uh, investment will this take? But this is also depending on who will run this service. Is this centrally, for example, by CESDA or by DIRIA or by uh, ERIS or by Claren um, Central uh, ERIC, or is this a small institute? That, that's depending on the, on the, on the uh, business models, but we are working on it and we will have, by the end of the project, we will have information about that uh, available. Um, and then a, a question, Dataverse seems to assume that all data can be made public. Sometimes interview surveys and records cannot be made publicly available due to ethical or legal issues. Um, yes, it is possible to make uh, data uh, that you have uh, restricted access to the, to the data itself, to the data files, or to some of the data files. The metadata is always publicly available, so if at the moment you publish a data set, then the metadata is uh, publicly available, but the data can be restricted. And there is an access mechanism that you can say, oh, those people can have access to my data and uh, other uh, people do, uh, yeah, won't get access. It's also possible to have a kind of pipeline construction that, um, so that, that there is even a more uh, more constraints on the availability of the data files it's, uh, itself. This data for the, the, the different levels of access perhaps with user authentication. Yeah, at the moment there's not really an automatic authentication so that, that you can say this um, for the end user that, that there is, or maybe Laura you can help me in this. Laura? I'm not sure where you're referring to. This is the question of Unmil Karadakar. Yes, but you mean automatic um, authentication. I'm not sure what you mean by that. But um, once you have, um, you can do an access request to a file, and that's um, related to your account in Dataverse. So in order to do an access request, you need an account. Uh, and depending on the, the instance, you can log in with your uh, institutional account or maybe with your ORCID account, it depends on the, the policy of that institute. But then once you have received the permission to download a file, that's then connected to your account. So once you log in, you will see that you have the permission. So that's in short how it works. Is, is this is this answering your question, Unmil? Yeah. Uh, the next question is from Gero. Uh, another question on adding keywords. Are there ways to make adding keywords easier than manual select a CV and insert, insert a link for every new keyword? Yeah, what what uh, what we are doing is that that there will be a connection, so you can choose with a, a drop down uh, menu. So if you have a thesaurus or a controlled vocabulary, then um, yeah, you can choose. So you don't have to type the, the the keyword in. Or do you? Or is that not your question? Hero. Maybe you can you can clarify. Oh, it is, yeah. Uh, but so it's depending on, on, on so every institute or every uh, group of institutes that is um, maintaining a data first service has to decide to which uh, controlled vocabulary they would like to uh, connect. So yeah, it's depending on the, on the controlled vocabulary. So some institutes would like to connect to, to uh, a more 
history controlled vocabulary, so not an institute or more social science uh, controlled vocabulary. So that's not possible for the end user. It is something that has to be decided beforehand in setting up the Dataverse installation. Uh, LOD, I don't know what, same question as Unmil for me. I don't know what you meant. I hope this question is answered. Otherwise, uh, please ask it again. Um, Julie Lenoir, um, could you share more on the timeline of the shock project? Yes, what we are uh, doing at the moment is that we are setting up a translation service so that people can translate the user interface those, for, from those institutes who are interested to setting up a dataverse themselves. And um, by the end of the uh, of this year, we would like to have uh, a development uh, instance for the, for the European uh, research uh, uh, communities that can be tested by them. And then we hope by the end of next year, we will have it uh, uh, every, every uh, all the developments uh, in uh, uh, realized. And so that in the, uh, the end of 2021, there will be um, a uh, development uh, or a production service running. But that's also depending. So we have to negotiate with, with the ERICs whether they would like to have um, the service running on their infrastructures or whether an institute uh, would do that. And we are uh, aiming to... to produce both solutions, so a centrally uh, Dataverse, but also an, what we call an archive in a box solution, where uh, smaller institutes can download the, the, the software, and um, this, this, this instance is then uh, already um, make compliant to their needs. So it's not a Harvard instance, but it's, it's the, the, the CESDA, or the Daria or the Claren uh, instance with already the metadata for Claria, Cl Claren or Daria uh, available in that instance. About data quality, how do you measure data quality? So what are, uh, are your metrics? That's data quality is not something at the moment that is part of the, of the software. So, um, yeah, that, that is something. If if you if you put uh, uh, bad data in Dataverse, that bad data comes out. It's it, there is no there are no tools on uh, measuring the data quality at the moment. Yeah, oh, one note on this: that, that this this is my uh, research topic, and I wrote my uh, doctoral dissertation about this topic. So I can I can tell you a lot, but right now it's. Uh, as, as Mario mentioned, it's not yet implemented in, in, in Dataverse. We have uh, uh, different plans. In the, in the literature, um, there are many criteria defined like uh, completeness and precision and um, uh, coherence, timeliness, and so forth. So, and, and each has some, some, some metrics. And um, I hope that in the future we can we can add this or at least some of them uh, to dataverse but right now it's it's not yet there however there is a data quality check uh, in some dataverse uh, instances uh, taken by the data curators when uh, this model is is um, uh, available The next question is from Maud Ehrman. Whether the Dataverse is maintained centrally or at an institution is indeed a crucial question with countless implications. Will you evaluate this aspect in detail as far as it is can be during the project? Yeah, that this will be part of the policy document and, and, and the document about sustainability. So, but um, yeah, it's, it's out of control of, of this small group because we are developing things and we will uh, discuss uh, possibilities with, with the, the different ERICs and with interested institutes. But 
they have to decide. We can't decide. And, and, and shock is a project. Because after the project, we can deliver uh, the software, but and we can li- deliver uh, ideas about uh, uh, the sen- sustainability of the services, but we can't decide ourselves. That that's a little bit uh, problematic. Always with the project that it ends, and then there is no money for for the project. So project never can run a service themselves, but we can offer the service to uh, to institutes or to Eric's. Uh, can we already access the code of the shock version? Yeah, there is. Um, we will. Uh, will we? We have uh, the code uh, at uh, different Git repositories. So uh, I, we will share it after this meeting uh, in the in the Q and A. Uh, yeah, and uh, one one other aspect is that that uh, there won't be. A, a shock version of its own. So we we uh, um, implement features in order to build in into the central repository of of Dataverse. So every development is is not uh, a forking of of the Dataverse software itself, but but we working closely collaborated with the uh, uh, Harvard team. And we have lots of discussions in different channels, um, and and the new features, which uh, turned out that important for for shock, uh, usually are important for the larger dataverse community. So we work together. Yeah. So therefore, that that's also a bit, little bit strange that because this is already open source software, so. When when we develop something, we will push it as as Peter mentioned. We will push it to the to the Harvard code, and other people are testing or developing it further. So it's it's in very close cooperation with Harvard and also with other uh, institutes around the world within the global consortium. Um, with Dataverse, how do you visualize relations of metadata sources, etc., to different repositories, focusing various research areas, having at the end a knowledge graph? Yes, it's it's possible, uh, but I think that's that's uh, a, a little bit. There's no time enough to to elaborate on this, but it's possible to use. Uh, um, um, Linked open data attached to to Dataverse. Maybe we can have another um, webinar about this. But it, that that's it's possible. And my colleague Slava Tikhanov are is working on this. Um, yeah, there was a question about different levels of access. Yeah, in in Dataverse, it's possible to 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 have open access and restricted access, and you can. Within restricted access, you can have um, access to uh, to give permission or or, or just close the, the access. So these were the questions in the in the chat, and we have now ten minutes more <laughs> about the the Mentimeter uh, questions. So please go back to your. Mentimeter, and maybe uh, Irena, you can share the slides from Mentimeter. So go to www.mentimeter.com and use the code 37409540. You can see it on the screen here. And um, so there are at the moment six answers and Six people would like to to use Dataverse. Two are not interested to use Dataverse. It's interesting to know why, but so most of them would like to to use uh, Dataverse. That's hopefully for us because then we don't do <laughs> the work. Uh, it's valuable for 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 others. The question is about individual researchers. Yes, so it's, this this webinar was meant for for researchers. So we would like to know if you if you are interested to use such a such a service. 
the next question. Would your research institute like to use the shock dataverse once it is available? So a couple of institutes who are interesting. So that makes it worthwhile to 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 move on with with our uh, developments and to to contact you. What well, uh, how you can use make use of our software and uh, how we can help you in uh, setting up such a service. Next question. Uh, what are your requirements? What functionalities should a tool have? This is a free question, so maybe you can enter some things you think is very important. Nobody, nobody's is typing, so maybe we interoperability, import tools from NASA. Yeah, that, uh, import tools from NASA. We are working on this interoperability. Yeah, with with a couple of social collaboration. Maybe also this this question is very difficult to 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 answer. But we will, we will, we will. What we will do is that in the next uh, coming, so in the beginning of uh, next year, we will have uh, test sessions, and also we would like to talk with you uh, how we can improve the user interface and other things, whether it is possible in in the in the context of this project. Yeah, uh, one one word about interoperability that I. Did not uh, show, but uh, there's a extensive API uh, both for uh, getting information from others and for providing information to other tools. And um, uh, there are some uh, client software which which makes use this API written in Python, uh, Java, and and uh, R. So uh, there are lots of things happened on interoperability uh, side as well. Next question, please. How well did you know Dataverse before this webinar? So, this is interesting. So half of them, so there's a little bit in between. Next question. Did you use services, download materials from any existing Dataverse in the past? So, so did you upload or download data material? So most people didn't. So I think what is important to my understanding is that we come back to you uh, if we have uh, our instance uh, available and to discuss with you whether this is something you can need, you, you can use or what you would like to adjust. Um, next question. Would you like to be able to adjust the user interface in your own national language? For some of them, it, that is very important. For example, in the Netherlands, we, we almost we, we use English for research purposes, but, but I see that, that for, for a lot of people of you, uh, the national language is very important. So we will, um, so we, we have the possibility to, to uh, translate and we, we, made, we have made tools for this so that you can translate the user interface. And one of the issues uh, to this is that every time uh, there is an upgrade of the software, you need to translate new lines, but we made it as, as, as easy as possible to, to accompany this, uh, this translation. Do you prefer to install Dataverse on your own service or to use a central installation of Dataverse?
I don't know, Irena, what you mean by option four, but. There are two people. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know the the the. So the only installation and central installation people don't know. But I don't know what is option four. But that's. Uh, we move on to the next uh, question. Would you be interested to test the functionality we are developing within Shock? So we need testers by the beginning of next year. So that would be nice if we can contact uh, you. So if you would like to test, please send me uh, an email to my um, to marion.wittenberg at dans.knw.nl. This, this email address will be shared uh, later on. A next question. Uh, this, these are questions from Peter. So pa Peter, maybe you can uh, share this uh, question. Is it well defined? Yeah, go on. Yeah, so is it well defined what are research data in your particular domain? So for as I mentioned that that when I worked with with archival data, I'm not sure that whether can I publish these research data or or should I ask permission from the archive or should I wait while archive will um, um, publish this data, etc. Cetera, et cetera. So in, in historical uh, domain, I see that that is not very clear, not as clear as, as for example, in astrophysics. Uh, I have one question to Irish. Can we, because it's it's almost uh, twelve thirty now? Can we can we uh, take a little bit longer time? Would you please answer that? Yes, of course. Please do. Oh, yeah. So people who would like to 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 stay, uh, we can. Uh, we can go on a, a couple of minutes. And Peter, would you elaborate on this question? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so I, I saw that that ten people said that that it's not quite clear. So could you give me some example? So what what is not clear? So what are the uh, obscure uh, parts of your research data? So what are, what are your questions when when you are not sure whether it is research data or not? Some examples. If if you could provide us, it would be great. Maybe not only the research data is is not not clear, but also the question is maybe not clear. So maybe we go go to the next question. How does your typical research data look like? So, uh, what are the the um, most important aspects? For example, size or format or accessibility. Are you working with large data or small data or somehow in between? Are you working with, with uh, quantitative data or more qualitative data, text or spreadsheets? I think this question is also not, not clear enough. So maybe we will we move on. It's already uh, oh here. Oh, no, here are coming large data, structured data, proprietary data sets, text, digitized, digitized documents. Next question, please. Do you add metadata to your to your data? So everybody, yes, I think most of the people will do that. No. <laughs> um, and the next question. Are there particularly in-house or community metadata schema you follow? Yeah, it's good to see that that 
most people you follow some some kind of standards it's very good because uh, this way um, the the data can be comparable so could you give me some could you give us some examples of, of your metadata schemes DDI, yeah. Are there others? So we are, we are already um, um, late because it's already 12.31. So Irish, can you, because you, you said you, you would end the webinar soon, can you, can, can you say until what time we, we have? Yes, I, I just want to thank everybody to, to have attended the webinar and uh, to remember to click on the link in the chat to fulfill the survey. Uh, for the feedback and if uh, those of you who want to stay uh, longer you can stay longer there is absolutely no problem but if some of you have to leave i already wanted to thank uh, those of you thank you thank you yeah thanks and next question What do you mean, Peter? By yeah, this, 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 this external uh, uh, data set. So, uh, is is it help or or is it a burden? Like, uh, so you have to rely on on external uh, data sets like uh, library, archive, uh, museum data. Uh, is it help your repeatability or or it makes it harder because you have don't have a control over it and if they they remove it you kind of lost your data or if they they move to a different place yeah next question Data. What kind of derivative data do humanities people generate out of these corpora? So, uh, if you work with with external data, do you create your own uh, version, or uh, do you create your derivative data out of it? For example, you have a textual doc document, and you run NLP tools and ex uh, extracts uh, place name, for example, and do you save the place names as, as a uh, uh, your own research data or it's just a temporary thing and and you keep only the original uh, form or do you create a spreadsheet um, uh, out of uh, out of these data uh, archival documents and maybe these questions are a little bit too difficult to, to answer in Mentimeter, and we come back to you with this yeah. question okay. to, to this, uh, this group. I think that's uh, so, and, and I think because it's already uh, one hour and a half, I will uh, share my screen to, to have um, the PowerPoint. Um, Just uh, for those who are still there, uh, if you would like to play with data first, so just have a, a feeling how it's working, uh, you can use the demo uh, dataverse of my institute, Dance. That's uh, demo.dataverse.nl, Dataverse General. And you can upload data, uh, give access to other people, and uh, one, 
one notice that the user permissions for a production dataverse are usual more restrictive. So it's not always possible to upload as a researcher uh, your data yourself when a, a, when an institute is um, doesn't make allow you to do this. But this is a, a possibility to play around with dataverse itself. And uh, thank you for your attention. If you have any questions uh, concerning Dataverse or the Shock Project Dataverse, uh, please contact me, and um, yeah, we will send out an an, an, an questionnaire uh, after this um, this event uh, whether you are willing to test and uh, cooperate with us in the future. Thank you, and uh, seeing you uh, another time. Bye. Yeah, thank you very much. Bye bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Irish, I think you can now uh, stop the webinar. Thank okay. you. Okay, there are just some people saying goodbye and thank yeah. you. So <laughs> I just let them. Okay, and I'm gonna stop the webinar in a few in a few seconds. Thank you all. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.